Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today I'm going to show you how we can make a course deviation indicator. Scratch that, two of them. Coming up. Captain Bob, Captain Bob, he's my best friend and he should be yours too. For this build you will need a stepper motor, three servo motors, a rotary encoder, two M3 6mm to 10mm screws, an Arduino Mega, and these 3D printed parts I designed. The link to these is in the description below. I'm also selling these. Check the description below for details. I'm going to start with the backing plate. We'll do the servos first. Out of the bag you'll get a servo and you'll want to screw on the one prong servo horn. In the future you'll want to make sure you know where the servo travel is because you do not want it to interfere with other servos. So make sure that this one would go from here to here. This one would go from here to here. Then make sure this one would go here to here. You'll want to make sure that the center of rotation for the servo matches up with the little holes in the front panel. So this one lines up, this one lines up, and this one lines up. So it's the center here and the center here. Now you can screw these servos on. Let's go on to the stepper motor. This is a 28 BYJ48 stepper motor. It's 5 volts and it fits nicely onto the mount. You can use M3 screws and put them through here. Then you can place the nut over and tighten it. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you want it tight enough so that it won't fall off. You can do the same with the other side. Now we can put the servo and motor covers on. Just slide them over and they should snap into place. Then the stepper motor gear just plops onto the stepper motor. Now the back panel looks like this. Now we are going to put the sticker on these two parts. I photoshopped this decal and I'm going to laminate it on one side only with a thermal laminator. It came out quite nice and I'm going to cut out the little center. I suppose I could have used a knife to cut the center, but I used two pieces of paper. The second one is the outer ring, and I'm doing the same on the laminator with one side. I'm cutting roughly and then cutting as close as I can. I'm gluing the outer ring to the gear ring, then I'm gluing the inner decal to the front faceplate. I'm also cutting the center out of the outer gear ring along the plastic line to make sure that it's only the gear ring shown. So I get two nice pieces. You can then put these two parts together and put your two rods. For the VOR needles, I printed this one with the raft, but I didn't print with supports touching the base plate. With this one, I printed with no supports whatsoever. And then with this one, I printed with a raft and then base plate support. And I think this one out of the three turned out the best. You're going to want to make sure that the triangle fits onto the servo horn. With me, the triangle didn't really come out very cleanly, so I'm just helping it a little bit with my uh, side snips. Printing with a lower layer height will help a lot with the triangle. Now you can put the needles into their holes and put the servo horns on the back. I'm going to do a lot of tweaking in the future to make sure that these are thinner and that you can see the dots behind them. Maybe do a little more Photoshop on the decal as well. You're also going to want to make sure that the 180 degrees of rotation that the servo has aligns with the 180 degrees of your VOR. So from there to there it's within the 180 degrees so we're good. 
we'll do the same step with the horizontal needle. Now it will look like this. This servo horn right here will go to these two arrows. I haven't completed designing it yet, but it's basically going to cover up one of the holes whenever it's rotated. Now make sure they're on top of the servo servos and then you can put on the gear ring. You'll notice that you can't turn it because the gear right here connected to the stepper motor is preventing you from doing that. Now you can get the bezel and put the rotary encoder through the largest hole. Note that this has to be a long rotary encoder. A short rotary encoder won't work because it has to go through all the way through the bezel. You can then put a rotary encoder cap on it. In the future I'm going to design a 3D printed cap. And then you can place it over the instrument. I'm now going to use some metal screws so that I can screw this instrument into the panel. Also keep in mind you can zip tie these wires together for wire management. The materials for the second CDI are very similar. You'll notice you have one less needle so you'll need one less servo than before. We'll start by putting the hardware onto the back plate and go from there. Now put on the to from indicator and we can put the servo horn on for the needle. I put the needle on and also the gear ring. And again with the bezel we'll get the in rotary encoder and the encoder cap. And then put it over the assembly. Now you can put the decals on like you did before. The link to the decals is in the description below. I'll show you any updates I've made to this in a future video. How to configure the CDI with MobiFlight. Watch out for that. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon, Aviation Master. He has a YouTube channel and the link to it is in the description below. If you'd like to join me on Patreon, you can join using the Patreon link in the description below. If you haven't already, make sure to join the Discord. It's an awesome community with a lot of flight simmers and home cockpit builders. I'm sure you'll meet someone like you. I've made a ton of other videos about home cockpits. Make sure to watch these over here. Hope you have a fantabulous rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.